Hey everybody, Andrew from Basic Basics. Uh, today we're gonna go ahead and walk through how to do the do-it-yourself test fixture for the L3. So we'll step through setting up the board, uh, setting up the wires, the TTL to USB converter, and then burning the software off the website using Bellina Etcher. And then we'll walk through a little bit of what it should look like once you get it all set up. So here's what we've got. Let's see if it works. Basics.com. I went ahead and went to my Blogiverse tab, and all we're going to do is simply click on the L3 Plus projects and downloads. Once we get there, we'll go ahead and scroll up on the project download basics. So, what we've got here, you've got the official download. So, what you're going to do is you're going to come here to the L3 Plus test fixture software and go ahead and start that download. It'll bring you to a Google Drive, and then all you're simply gonna do there at that point is download the file to get it started. And there you go, save it off onto your drive. We're gonna unzip this, and this is what we're gonna go ahead and use Bellina Etcher to write to our drive with. All right, after we unzip our file, you'll see we'll get an image file. That's the 2017-0415. So what you'll do at that point is you'll run Bellina Etcher, and you'll go ahead and select the image file to start with. As far as your drive, you're going to select your SD card. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky. You need to have a minimum of an 8 gigabyte SD card. It also needs to be clean with all the partitions removed off it and a blank card, no one partition formatted at FAT32. What's going to happen is it's going to build a structure. It's going to build a multiple partition uh, structure because it uses it as temporary storage as well. So if you have a thumb drive that's already partitioned, you may run into an issue with it not working. Um, I've seen issues with four gigabyte, which is why I recommend larger. And most importantly, starting with a clean SD card uh, seems to generally fix most of the problems. Once you go ahead and get that loaded, it's going to validate, and then you're ready to go ahead and plug that into your L3 test fixture. Now to build the test fixture, what we're going to have to do is separate our I.O. board from our control board, so we have access to the pins you see here. We need to be able to get access to ground, transmit, and receive. And what we're simply going to do is we're going to take a male to female jumper wire, connect to the receive, transmit, and ground on the board itself, and we'll solder it. Then we're going to run those female connections over to our USB to TTL connector. Once again, just on the transmit and receive and the ground pins. Once we have that set up, we can go ahead and sandwich our boards back together and set it up in the unit. All right, first things first, I use serial tools to connect. So we want to make sure we select our serial port for our USB to TTL connector. We're going to go ahead and do 8 bits, no parity, 115, 200 baud rate. So you see what we've got. I'm going to go ahead and decompress. We go ahead and boot up and start verifying the checksum. Basically it's going to go through a series of checks on its own. Once it there it goes. Decompressing, got the boot log. Now it's going out and trying to discover the rest of the unit here. See what it's got. And essentially at this point what it's doing is looking for the attached peripherals. Uh, they're going to be used on the system itself here. Give it a few more seconds. There we are. All right. So at this point, we know that we boot it up. It'll automatically step in here. And essentially what we've got right now is we are ready to test. Now, if you want to actually run the test in here, all you have to do is push the IP SIG button that's on your L3. Like so, it automatically jumps right into the test there. So it's going to go out and look at the voltages, check the number of chips that you've got and say like in this one you can see obviously not enough ASICs. Now this is 
a particular board that I have that I've uh, been doing repairs on. So you see it's detected them. But then, of course, won't complete the test because of that. Now, once we start the test, what it's essentially going to do, it's going to write values to the registers on every single ASIC. And you'll just scan back in the log and essentially for each ASIC, it'll have a error or pass. And what it's going to be, it's going to be looking for either all zeros or all Fs. So you'll very quickly see if you're having an error with any of the uh, individual ASICs itself. Uh, it doesn't specifically say what's wrong with it. What it is going to do is just tell you what is the failure. And that's also what the individual test fixtures you can buy with the little LCD screens tell you as well. This just gives you a little bit more power to look in and obviously go back and scan through logs, especially if you have multiple failures. So a common failure I've seen is the kernel panic failure. And essentially what that means is your SD card isn't formatted properly. So what I would suggest is go back and remove all the partitions from the SD card you have. Make sure it's greater than four gigabyte. Um, set up one single partition for the entire size and format that FAT32. Then go back through the whole process with Polina Etcher, selecting it, running it. Um, otherwise, you'll continue to see this kernel panic. You'll also see it if you try to just simply copy the files over from the image file. And that's because it needs to build that directory structure and that extra virtual drive that you'll see that pops up in another volume. Okay, so after taking the card, removing the partitions, reformatting FAT32 on one partition, you see we start booting up, it decompresses, and this time we're going to have the correct function from the kernel, which is sending discovery looking for all the components. I hope you found this video useful. Please visit ASICBasics.com. Go ahead and subscribe and follow me on YouTube and feel free to hit me up with any questions, comments, or videos or information you'd like to see.